Oh, hey guys, I didn't see you there. Hey, I'm standing here in front of the uh, Saturn V at Johnson Space Flight Center. What an awesome piece of machinery. There are millions of different separate pieces of technology that went into building this, and nobody can know everything. And so that's the idea behind this group. If you have a technical question about anything that we cover, really all you have to do is just ask. Hey guys, welcome to the first ask video. So here's the scenario. Your customer has an issue. He can't get to a server or a website or some network related target, uh, or maybe they've got an application that's slow. They are in an environment where things are pretty locked down. They can't install a utility, uh, can't install Wireshark, can't install Netmon, can't install Message Analyzer, uh, or maybe they can install them, but they have to go through a process uh, the application has to be evaluated and that can sometimes take weeks or weeks or months in some customer environments. Um, so uh, what are you going to do? Well, here's what you're going to do. There is a utility built into Windows called NetSH and NetSH allows you to capture network traffic. It's built in, it's been built in since Windows 7 um, and uh, really all you need is local admin rights and you can open up a an admin command prompt and you can take a network trace and I'm going to show you how. If I type in netsh space trace space start space capture equals yes I can hit enter here and that's all I need to do. I can capture network traffic right now just by hitting enter. I'm going to add a couple of additional switches here. The first one I'm going to add is trace file equals c colon backslash temp backslash ask test uh, 2.etl um, and uh, that'll put the trace file in the temp directory and the reason I'm doing that is because if I don't specify a path it puts it in the app data directory about six levels down and it's just uh, hard to navigate there it's easier if you know exactly where you're putting it and it's you know somewhere that you go to all the time for data files and that that's why I like to use the temp directory if the temp directory is not there you'll get an error message but it's pretty self-explanatory you may need to create the temp directory or you can point it to any directory you want as long as you know where the directory is and you can get to it easily it's fine the other thing I'm gonna do is max size equals and I'm gonna say 1024 by default NetSH uh, will uh, capture up to 250 megs. That's usually okay. That's usually plenty of room. Um, if I'm on a server that has uh, a lot of network activity, it's very busy, it may not be enough. So by uh, setting this to one gig, I can, I can capture up to one gig of network data before it starts to circular log. And by the way, we can, we can set this up to two gig if we need to. Um, it'll do two gigs if, if that's what we need to do. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is packet truncate bytes. And I'm just going to set this at 100. What that does is it says, hey, only capture the first 100 bytes of each packet. This allows me to fit a lot more packets into a trace. Uh, generally, today, most of the stuff we put on the wire is encrypted once you get past all of the networking headers. So that data is not really useful anyway. And if I don't truncate the packets, it's just going to sit in the trace and take up space. So uh, by default, a full Ethernet packet can be up to 1460 bytes in a standard Ethernet environment. Um, this will only capture 100 bytes of each packet. So it gives me a lot of room uh, to store additional data. Now if I hit enter, I'm capturing a network trace. And take a look at some of the settings here. There's the trace file that we specified. Um, circular logging is on. Uh, max size is 1024 megs. And uh, we are running. Now I could let this run for as long as I need to because it will circular log. But I'm going to stop it. And all I have to do is type in netsh space trace space stop. And it will create the ETL file and it will also create a CAB file. 
and that CAB file contains a lot of information about the system configuration. Um, some people find the CAB file useful. If I'm just looking at network traffic, I don't really care about the CAB file, but it's there and it's certainly something that's useful to have if you need it. Um, so this will this process will take a few minutes, and as soon as it's done, we can go take a look at that directory. Okay, we finished writing the cab file and the ETL, and so if I do a cd backslash temp and just get a quick directory, you can see there's my ETL file and there's my cab file, and the ETL file is the one that I want. Uh, I'm going to fire up Network Monitor and we'll load that up and let you see the network traffic that we captured. Okay, I've got the uh, ETL file, so now I'll just open that up. I'm going to do Open Capture. And uh, I'm in my temp directory. There's Ask2. Uh, it'll open up here in just a second. There we go. And notice that we have network traffic. All right, so I can filter out all the stuff I don't want here real quick. I can do an IPv4 and just hit apply, and it'll get rid of all the net event stuff. Um, but there it is. There's a network trace. I took it using a command prompt, and I didn't have to do anything special pretty straightforward. Well, that's it for this ask. And remember, never be afraid to ask.